Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast for the worst team in World Tour, at least in my opinion. They may be just ahead of Astana in the ranking. They're both in the relegation zone after 2024. Arkea B&B Hotels. B&B Hotels, they're just desperate to be in the in the Tour de France uh, in some description. <laughs> so they're, they're a co-sponsor next year alongside Arkea. Not the best year at all. 7,229 UCI points. 10 wins. No World Tour victories. It's um, yeah, a season to forget for them. Not the best year. A season to forget. Those are the biggest euphemisms I've ever heard in the world of cycling. <laughs> had a dog shit season. Zero World Tour wins, 10 victories. <laughs> like, I, I, won't, I won't pretend this is good. I remember doing a tier list for the Tour de France for the... For the Giro, no, for the Velta, the two Grand Tours that I did one for, and they were in the lowest category every time, as if if they weren't in that race, I wouldn't have noticed. So, of course, they had yeah, injuries. But this I'm isn't a bad back. season for them. This isn't a bad season for them. This is who they are. This is who <laughs> RK are. There was just a scam system that allowed French teams to farm and Belgian teams to farm, except Lotto Destiny decided not to for two of those three years. At like, 2020, 12 wins and a one World Tour win. 2021, 10 wins, no World Tour wins. 2022, 12 wins, one World Tour win. Like, this is who they are. They're just yeah. a little bit worse, and they got rid of Quintana, and the point <laughs> system changed. So it, they got exposed, especially they're like, thanks, Quintana, for all those points. With the, you know, and when you got done for Tramadol in the Tour de France, yeah. um, see you with the extension, but it did miss his points. It's a pro team in World Tour's clothing, and I don't know why the fuck we're even doing a preview for this because they achieved nothing in 2023. They tried to save it now with Demar being signed. Actually, I am hopeful really about smart a few signing. riders. I agree. I'm hopeful for a few riders. I like Demar riding in this jersey because the kit is fucking beautiful. It's That's nice the first kit, light yeah. point. The kid is beautiful. The way he pulled that Excalibur sword out of the rock, <laughs> man, I was trembling on my toes. But <laughs> Kevin Vaucalin, very talented rider. Injuries this year. Injuries since, I think, uh, Romandy, he DNS'd a stage or DNF'd a stage. Had a hip pain and that didn't really get resolved too easily. And then he was aiming to be GC leader at the Vuelta in his comeback, but he wasn't very good at the Vuelta. So... I'm still very hyped to see what Volkelang can do. I don't remember what happened to Louvel because I swear he was very talented, but then yeah. I don't remember if he actually did. Oh, yeah. He did some gravel races, so that's that. <laughs> but yeah, what am I supposed to... Am I supposed to invent achievements for 2023? Like, they won some one that won races. Hoorah. It's a Walter team. I don't care. Luca Mozzaro was pretty good. Yeah, I agree. But he's also a top 10 sprinter. ECR points. Not because of his speed, but because of his positioning. As in, he's so bloody good at getting through gaps and finding a way to stay in a certain position in a sprint that he just needs to stay there to get a top 10 position. He doesn't out sprint people necessarily, which it's a hell of a skill. And I'm wondering, is that a skill that would be good for a lead out? Yeah, three top 10s in the Tour de France stages. Look for yep. little old Luca Mozzato, and he's a good sort of semi classics guy, too. Um, it's just quietly, so I think, yeah, Mozzato was good. They they spent a lot of money on Shampoo Saint Rodriguez, they were useless. Um, yep. unsurprisingly, like they thought, yeah, they thought Shampoo Saint was someone he's not. Um, yep. and that's. But I think they're both Aquadro boys too. So, the yeah, best not signings. good. Yeah, not the best. Uh, I did think that LeBert and Cost, yeah, and then other guys who in, had impressed me in 2022 didn't kick on either. You already mentioned it, like yeah. Louvel, like, um, I mean, Volkler showed a lot, and then I thought he would really kick on. Good wasp per kilo, and I think in Paris Nice, he was very, very good on mm -hmm. Loge de Garde. So at the start of the year, I was thinking, wow, this is like, you look at the start, of, look at his first 12 race days, you think, wow, he's really like serious guy. And then one Tour de Jura, which was a nice 
sort of hill mountaintop finish. But yeah, as you said, uh, he must have had a crash or something. Uh, I yep. don't know exactly. Romandy. So, okay, sorry. Well, that's kind of out of their hands when their best prospect. And they did extend him to the end of 25. So yeah. like, that's a good job by them because they're going to need him to really kill it in the next two years. And he would have gotten poached for sure because he is 22 and already really, really good. So they did a good May. job locking him up for the rest of this cycle. Nasser Buhani had a howler of a season. He DNS'd and DNF'd half his races. He OTL'd around him. I feel, I feel bad for Buhani, actually. Me too. He but, like got taken out in a really dangerous crash in Turkey yeah. after he'd already crashed a lot that, that year, and I think it just cooked him. Well, not no, Probably. physically it did. It like really he was badly injured. No one really cared because it's Buhani. And um, yeah, that's kind of ended his career. It's a real shame. And he... Yeah. He's retired, and it's, it's yeah, it's a real shame. But the and other like, outgoings, sorry, go on. I do want to talk about Wuhani a bit because he, I swear, like throughout my entire, we got to fill the spot guy with something. So I'm going to talk about Wuhani for five minutes. Nasir Wuhani is the kind of sprinter where he was always that, he's kind of like Demar in that sense, that he was that sprinter that won the Giro sprints when the other competition wasn't the, the number one out, out there sprinters. And the same happened with Demar, and they come from a very similar background in terms of the team they were in earlier. As in, they both rode for the same team, FDG, back in the early 2010s, if I recall correctly. There was this in-team fight between the two leaders, and then eventually that led to Buhani being shipped off to Arkea, which, uh, to Kofidis, sorry, to Kofidis. And that was a good move by Kofidis. They won loads of shit with, with Buhani. I'm pretty sure he won multiple Velta stages, three of them. Uh, three Giro stage in the same year in 2014, where I think he won Chiclamino as well. I actually don't remember, but anyway, I feel like that was the one angle, good sprinter. The other angle was the actual puncher without the U, as in the actual puncher, he punches people in cycling, was the kind of rumor that was going on, an actual boxer in the sport, which at a certain point was very true, as in he was a menace on a bike at a certain point. Yeah. But then it crossed into the moment where he was so vilified. I don't know if that's a word, but I'm using it anyway. Yeah, yeah. And that's he was seen as the villain when he wasn't actually doing that bad of a things anymore. And other riders were doing the exact same things, but he was getting punished for the things that other people weren't getting punished for. And it's weird. I don't know when it exactly popped over to the other side, but I felt a bit bad for him afterwards, even though earlier on he was a bit of a Moscon. Yeah. I mean, probably not the favorite rider of many people in the bunch, but then, as you said, definitely punished unfairly at times. And certainly when people would do egregious things to him, never were, were I never saw it sanctioned. So um, yeah. that's just the way it goes, I guess. Uh, he's out. Bargill to DSM Fermanic post NL. Probably that's fine to let him go. Hofstetter to Israel, back to Israel. Maxim yeah, but- Bouet and Laurent Pichon retire. Ede don't know. Clement Russo to Groupama. Ponema to Korotek alongside Padun. When it comes to Bargill, I did feel like he had a lot of points. I recall him having was yeah, 800 800s. UCI points in, yeah. in 2023. So that's quite a bit that is being left go off. Could he have done that again in 2024? Maybe. I think that's what DSM is hoping for to replace their leaving uh, point scorers. Hofstetter... He kind of fiddled out, as in, in previous years, he was that rider that would do top fives in those dot one classics like Le Sama and so forth. I didn't see that in 2023. Mouet and Pichon, I'm not worried about them leaving. Ede, he was part of that Quintana train, but he was also yeah. one of those riders that five years ago would be competing in a, a Giro breakaway for the stage, for example. And Bonomar, I swear, this man, like, this man joined joined a pro team when he was like 12 is how I remember it. And then he joined the Giro when he was 13 because then he was the youngest rider to start a Giro or something just for the sakes of being the youngest rider of the Giro at um, uh, the, the guy that's running to the finish line in that one meme in the Giro. What's his name? The Italian team manager. Oh, uh, Gianni Savio and, and Androni. Yeah, in his team. Yeah, yeah. He was in there, then he moved to this team for a year, and now he's going to Korotek. This man's being shipped off left and right, and 
I actually don't know if he's that talented. <laughs> yeah, so I, I mean... My point is they're not missing him. No, I don't think so. And um, he's another... He's re represented by Quadro. So, did you know that Arno Tamar was their fourth highest point scorer this year? And he was Shocking, not huh? far... Not, he's like 100 points behind being the top scorer. 130 points behind being the top scorer. So, that's obviously a very good signing by them. Uh, and yeah, they got him in, got but some points. Is it still savable? How bad is their situation exactly? No, they got they got no chance unless Vorkland turns into a hitter, unless like a proper like world tour one week top ten yeah. tour proper hitter, and also in Hilly one one days, unless Demar is just farming and also consistently competitive in the tour sprints and in shell de price brugge panatype races and guys like Louvel kick on i very much doubt all of that is going to happen so yep. i think they are in big big trouble and when it comes to their incoming transfers yes there are big names in there florian Seneschal. he's one of those riders i don't know i just ruined that name i feel like florian Seneschal. he 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 was one of those riders that he benefited at Quickstep from the numerical little advantage of having multiple leaders and then being one of the leaders that could benefit in a certain race. But that didn't really work anymore once that numerical... I can't talk anymore. Numerical advantage was gone. <laughs> and then at, at Arkea, I feel like they're never going to have that advantage. So I'm fearing that Seneschal might turn into a bit of a... a 2022 20, Hofstetter? Or is that too harsh? Probably, probably correct. Which is sad because I'd like to be see Seneschal in the final group at Roubaix. And so maybe being at Arkea might allow Seneschal to be send the head I mean, at Roubaix. It seems unlikely. It seems unlikely, but oh, I kind of want to see it. Maybe short yeah. box style makes it into the final group. Um, yep. Something like that. I want to see that happen. That would be fun. Albanese, I'm pretty hyped about. I think that's a good signing. Italian classics and. He can take some points left and right. He's probably not very expensive, so I see that. And he's not... It doesn't seem extremely I mean, likely to me. good as fuck. He's yeah, actually really good. He can good. fight for a Giro stage in the break. I can't believe a, I can't believe a better team didn't pick this guy up. He top 10 like every Italian classic that he did, just about. Yeah. He's really, and he was even good in Bauer's a Belgium tour. I, I was really surprised, actually, that he... And it seems to be only a one year. He's way better than that. I couldn't believe, like. But he signed anyway. before the Italian classics, right? Yeah. But even but his Giro, Giro, he was pretty solid. Yeah. Yeah. I was really shocked by that. Venturini is for points, uh, five hundred UCI points this year. So they're just going to hope that basically those three sprinter guys can silently top five as many races as possible. Scotson's yeah. brought in because he's the uh, lead out for Demar. Uh, yep. Raul Garcia Pierna is from Equipo Current Pharma. He is uh, Mate, a, de a decent hyped. rider. He's a decent he's rider. He was hyped two years ago that won the Spanish ITT Championships, if I recall, at Ken Pharma. Yeah. Then I started naming him for every time trial in the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which might have been a bit exaggerated. He's a, decent pun he's a decent puncher. Like, uh, okay. He came third in Burgos. Uh, from the big breakaway, I think behind. Yeah, I mean, de decent's maybe generous. Um, puncher, he, but he's like a solid enough rider, you know, like fourth in the yeah. U23 ITT. Uh, I'll be interested to see what their program with him is. I dare say it will be a lot of sort of French mixed one day races. Uh, they would say he's a polyvalent rider. That's a bit of French for you, Benji. Uh. But other than that, anyone else of interest? Laurence Heist is also being signed in addition to that. Oh, and yeah. I feel like he's a nice guy. Um, but when it comes to the results, I just don't feel like he stepped up to the point that I can expect points from him on a regular basis. So maybe a domestique for Denzer or something, but I don't think he'll necessarily move the needle for the team. So I don't think that's going to make the biggest difference. And overall, I just feel like this isn't enough what they're doing. And for the riders that are transferring to this team, it feels like transferring to a pro team in my head. 
It's a pro le Conti level team. They got the wild cards from being a French team for the races they want to do anyway. Yeah. We all see where this is probably heading. Uh, so they're probably going to get, I mean, they can't get relegated next year, but they are. Uh, yeah, I think that, but still they're going to try and survive. And so their goals, Benji, what should their goals be for next year? Score as many points as possible, right? That's yeah. just it. There's no That's other it. goal. And maybe for the sponsors, try and win it to the front stage with Demar. Yeah, that's a good one too. Try win <laughs> to the front stage with Demar. Uh, I think they actually could have a pretty decent lead out. I reckon they could put a pretty decent lead out together with Albane uh, Albanese and Mozzato and Seneschal. Scots Scotson and Seneschal. They got a pretty decent lead out for Demar actually. Uh, I think it will be Seneschal and Scotson at the tour. So that's not bad at all, but yeah, the hopefully I really hope Volcanite kicks on. I'd love to see yeah. another French GC contender, you know, not on FTJ or, or AG Two R, just uh, to mix it up. And I think he's super talented. Yeah. I'd love to see uh, Louvel or Lebert or who else is there? Mainly Louvel, like show something mm -hmm. more in the classics, but uh, yeah. otherwise. We'll be seeing this team mostly on our TVs in the uh, breakaways on stages, but flat stages in July. If you're solely thinking about points, then sending Neymar to the Tour de France is not the wisest idea. No, it is because it's so many points and you just got to get good lead out, top fives. But Giro Velta didn't know? Oh, More true. chance to win Cause the stages? Because there's not that many, not a big drop off and you're right. But then there's all these like bullshit then, classics he could do. True, but he's so good yeah. at those. You're right. Maybe instead of Giro, then maybe Tour of Vuelta. Bullshit classics. Tour when's, of Vuelta. The, when, when's all the class like when's all Paris, Shawnee, and all that shit? I don't know. I know more behind so far is during the Giro, but I know there's a lot of Belgian and French ones during the Vuelta as well. So it's kind of like you have to choose one, eh? And I feel like. He's more likely to do what grows it at the Velta than, than at the Giro. So that's why I'd see him Velta styling that, personally. But yeah, then again, he, they might send him to Renui Tour combined with all that stuff. So I don't know. But he's doing the tour. That is just, that he's doing the tour. Yeah. They is. already said. They already said. Yeah. So, but you're right. Like maybe I, I think he has to do one of the weaker Grand Tours in combination, though. He has to yep. for points. There's too many points on offer there. And then you can send to the other classics a combination of Albanese, Mozzato, and Venturini to like triple stack the top top ten and uh yeah. hope to survive. So, you know, this is life at the bottom. Maybe they'll try to pick up a win here or there. Uh it'd be great if DeMar did win a tour stage. I would really enjoy seeing that actually. I hope that does happen. Uh but otherwise it's gonna be a tough year for them, I think. And because, like, I actually do, like, Lauren Sweet, I actually do think their signings are actually pretty decent. They just, they probably just have, they got no money. Like, they would have spent it all on Damar anyway. Um, yep. I mean, we say that, Benji, but didn't the U UCI just came out? And every year it comes out, because every team, right? Even the big teams, small teams, successful teams, unsuccessful teams. Every team says, we're poor. Right? Yeah. All the time. We're poor. We got no money. All these other big budget teams got no money. Someone signs a new rider on 6 million euros, they'll still talk about other teams having too much money. Or, the, you know, they got more money than us to just sign riders. And um, what, was the, what was the median or average World Tour team the budget? The average World Tour team budget on the men's side is 28 million. The median is 25 million. On the women's side is 3.8 average and 3.6 i think median which i'm also shocked by what's happening on the moment side i didn't expect it to be that high either so i'm kind of like on both pages i expected it to be high the median on the men's side and both the average and the median on the women's side but 28 million average i i'm not shocked by that because i've expected the higher salary or the higher budgets to, to, to kind of up. pull it up i just didn't expect the median to be 25 and it has gone up 3 million, the median, since last year. So from 22 million to 25 million in 2024. So um, that's curious. Is it a problem that 
The average salary is 449k, while the median salary is 220k. Is it a problem that the gap is so big? Yeah, because I think that we're like, not to pick on Arkea, but if you look at look through their team, Kevin Ledenois, Alan Ryu. It sounds like a team you can get for 10 million. Alessandro Ver. Max. Louis, Louis, Louis Barre. Those guys are on like 45 grand, man. Mate, um, how much do you reckon their team, you, you can build a team like that for? Not even 10, but like... Just ride, pure, just ride a salary? Just ride a salary, I'll say... F four or five million? Five million. Like of a privilege. Expensive and so forth. Yeah, five mil. They probably got a budget of 10, 11 million. Like, it's tough. It's tough for them. And they're, they're spending probably 10, 10, over 10% 10 of it on Damar. Well over 10%, maybe. And I have right a salary because also the marginal the the fit the um I think they've got fifteen million would be MBN. The, the fixed costs don't scale, so it's actually the the less money you have, it's even tougher because you still got to go yeah. on the to the races. You still got the logistics costs, travel costs, yeah, uh, all that shit. So that doesn't scale as well. So of right a salary, probably have to pay someone like Demar like 20 percent. So. But then you could do guys, you know, a lot of the French guys, as I said, like Grandin and whatever, are on the minimum um, contract. So I don't know why I brought that up. Just to say that <laughs> don't let these teams fool you. Maybe not Arkea, but maybe even Arkea with the BNB money, but don't let these teams fool you. Like some of them do have more money than you think. They just often yeah. spend it on. Um, Oh, right, that, that don't perform, yeah. I just well, they have a, they have a solid budget. They're like, <laughs> they're well in the twenties, well yeah. in the twenties. Like they got yeah. at least an average budget, uh, and well and above the median, I would say. All right, that's the arcade BNB hotels preview. Uh, let us know what you think about the team next year. Does Demar win? What celebration do, does he abuse Mark Matteo to his face May. if he wins a tour stage? Sir, Sir Patrick oh, how many of the World House tour Rouge. stages. How many World Tour stages and hot takes? One. Oh, yeah, I just one, one World Tour win. Two World Tour wins. Bullish. Any oh, hot I'm takes? very bullish on this team, as you, as you heard from my friend at the start of the <laughs> podcast. And Kevin my hot Volkner, take is oh? top 10 Giro. It's not impossible. I just don't see it at the moment because of. His lack of results in the second half of the season because of his injury. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, can't because he doesn't look like he can do it. I believe. <laughs> I think uh, Kevin Volkler. What you want? What do you want? Do you want the the I just put my microwave on for five minutes, medium warm take? Uh, do you want the I left the <laughs> the gas stove on and my house is burning? No, nah, it's take, gonna be hot. Or do you want the, the volcano? Hot I just fell down Not a volcano and I'm I'm melting. Headache. Oh yeah, in between the last two. In between the last two. Volkan podium Sparinis. It's a nice route for him. It's a it's a it's a Mate, it's a taste. You no, know, shocker route. There's a DDD. Have you seen it? He's fucked. Oh, true. <laughs> That's so mean. He's got a podium. No, no. If you take the TTT results out, he would have podiumed. Yes, that's it. That's it. That's my hot take. There yeah, it yeah. is. Which is like, for most World Tour scouts, it's like a step too far for them to do that with the Tour de l'Avenir results. <laughs> They're like, ah, oh, but he came third. It's like, yeah, well, yeah, you have yeah. like six Norwegian 90 kilo cross-country <laughs> skiers ferrying him around. Meanwhile, Mexico <laughs> on fucking... Doing their best here. Columbia, Columbia's six fifty-five kilo kids uh, on road bikes. Yeah, legit. To eleven here. Can we just stop with the TTTs? It's ridiculous. Yeah. It it makes no sense. Apparently, so uh, it's a professional race. They can have a team charge roll, yeah. uh, which I they have again. It's a very similar course to last year, but just without a proper mountaintop finish. It's like Puncher City. Uh, Civico will be going there, I think. Uh, that's the Arcana B&B Hotels preview. Maybe Raul, Raul Garcia Piona and Christian Rodriguez will clean Andalusia. Who knows? Without Pagacha being there, it's time to shine, boyos. Or Volkan there, the triple threat. So, 
maybe we're being too bearish. I don't think so. I think they will stay where they are in that table by the end of 2024 because our Astana are also coming. Thanks for listening. We'll see you with the next preview. Ciao.